Greetings of the day. In this session, we are going to discuss about Towers of Hanoi. Uh, Towers of Hanoi is uh, a recursive procedure. Along with the concept of Towers of Hanoi, we will be discussing how the time complexity of Towers of Hanoi has been derived. So, first of all, we will discuss what is Towers of Hanoi. Towers of Hanoi is a problem where we will be given with three rods. We will be naming the rods to be A, B and C. And each and every rod is distinct. So, uh, we have three rods over here and we will be given with discs. Something like this. Each and every disc could be of different sizes. So, what we have to do is that we have to move these discs from the source to the destination. We will assume the A rod to be the source and the C to be the destination. So, we have to move the discs from source to destination that is from A to C. So, in this we have two conditions. The first condition is that you have to do uh, move only one disc at a time and then the second condition is that you have to place only the smaller discs on the larger one that is the larger disc should not be placed on the smaller discs that the size is very important smaller disc should be placed only upon the larger disc here we will be specifying the movements and this movements can be 2 pi n minus 1 that is the time complexity which we are going to derive so for example say if uh, there are only one disc here uh, we have only placed one disc over here so the n value is 1 which means the number of discs so for this n equal to 1 how many movements there will be that is movement of disc so 2 power 1 minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 1 move so very simple our goal is to move the discs from A to C. Here they have given only uh, one disc. So we can automatically move the disc which is placed in A to C such that we have moved it. That is all. So initially the figure could be uh, something like A will uh, disc will be only in A and uh, later when we move the disc could have been placed to C. So the same we will be seeing for n equal to 2 that is number of disc equal to 2 n is equal to 2 which means we have 2 discs so initially we will see how many moves could be there so for calculating the moves it is 2 power n minus 1 here n is equal to 2 so 2 power 2 minus 1 that is equal to 4 minus 1 3 moves so here I am having my rods over here and I have two discs here so this is A, B and C so what we have to do is very simple we have to move these two discs to C so it is very clear A, B and C so first initially I am moving the smaller disc to B so first step what I am doing is I am moving I will just number this to be 1 and 2 so I am moving the second disc to B since it is smaller I am moving over here. So this is my first move and later I am the same the larger disc could be placed in the A itself and after which so I have placed a this smaller disc here no change in it now I am just going to move the A disc to C so larger disc I have moved to C 
so a b and c and now very simple we have three so it is very much well observed that for each and every move we have just moving only one disc to the other rod so now we have placed the larger disc in c that is it has reached its destination now we can move the second disc to b that's it so we have uh, successfully moved the two discs to a to c so the derivation is something that uh, which could be observed from the uh, total number of moves so here what we have done could be elaborated so that the derivation could be much clearer so this is the actual uh, problem given the first row and next we have done the three moves so for this what we have done first step what we have done we have moved a single disc to b so we have moved a to b we have moved a single disc to a to b that is uh, we have moved only one disc from a to b next what we have done we have moved uh, disc from a to c so we have moved a single disc from a to c next what we have done we have moved the disc from b to c so b to c we have moved a single disc so here the same steps could be similar for whatever the uh, number of disc is given so for example say here they have given two disc if suppose they have given three discs first what will they do is very simple they will be moving n minus 1 disc from a to b and later on uh, only a single disc could be remaining in a so they will be moving a single disc from a to c and then later they will be moving the remaining n minus 1 disc from b to c so the concept for tower of hanoi is that first step is that they will be moving n minus 1 disc from a to b and then they will be moving a single disc from a to c and then they will be moving n minus 1 disc from b to c so through this concept we are going to set up the recurrence relation and through the recurrence relation we will be able to derive the time complexity so as said earlier the recurrence relation we are just going to write the recurrence relation so here i am representing m of n to be the moment of n moment of n discs n discs so first i'll write m of 1 that is for moving one disc what could be the number of moves so when it is just a single disc will be directly moving from a to c so the answer could be 1 next for m of n that is we doesn't know what could be the value of n that is number of disc the number of disc could be 2 3 4 anything it can be so when there are n number of disc what is the standard step which we have maintained that is moving n minus 1 disc from a to b and a single disc from a to c and n minus 1 disc from b to c so it is very clear that we have to first make move of n minus 1 discs which is stated here and then we have to move a single disc from a to c which is represented here and then we have to move the n minus 1 discs from b to c which is said here so this is the recurrence relation so for every recursive algorithm we will be setting up the recurrence relation so for towers of Honai, this is the recurrence relation which we have been framed so i am just simplifying this particular recurrence relation i am going to derive the time complexity so here we have m of n minus 1 two times repeated so i am just writing it as 2 of m of n minus 1 plus 1 so this is m of n so for deriving the time complexity we are going to use the backward substitution method so for backward substitution in the sense uh, already we know what is m of n so now we are just going backwards to derive what is m of n minus 1 what is m of n minus 2 and etc so here we have m of n is equal to 2 into m of n minus 1 plus 1 so here first we'll write what is m of n minus 1 so already we know what is m of n through which we can write what is m of n minus 1 
सो एम ऑफ एन इज टू एम ऑफ एन माइनस वन सो एम ऑफ एन माइनस वन इज टू इन टू एम ऑफ हियर इट इज एन माइनस वन हियर इट इज एन सो दे हैव रिटर्न एन माइनस वन हियर इट इज एन माइनस वन इंस्टेड ऑफ एन इट इज एन माइनस वन सो आई एम जस्ट राइटिंग एन माइनस वन सो सब्सटूटिंग इंस्टेड ऑफ एन एन माइनस वन एंड ए वी हैव माइनस वन सो इंस्टेड ऑफ एन ओवर हियर आई हैव सब्सटूटेड एन माइनस वन एंड माइनस वन इज रिपीटेड सो प्लस वन सो आई एम जस्ट राइटिंग इट टू बी टू एम ऑफ एन माइनस टू प्लस वन so we have to write what is m of n minus 1 so we are just going to substitute this particular one in this m of n formula so so m of n is equal to 2 so instead of m of n minus 1 i am going to substitute the one so it is 2 m of n minus 2 plus 1 Plus one, so it's very square. Right? I'm just writing it to be two square m of n minus two plus two plus one. So through backward substitution, first we have written uh, what is m of n minus one. So now we have m of n minus two. So we are just going to derive what is m of n minus two. So we are going to use the same. m of n minus one formula which we have over here. So m of n equal to two m of n minus one. So here it is two m of instead of n it is n minus two. The minus one the same repeats which is in the formula plus one. So it is two m of minus two minus one it's minus three plus one. So instead of m of n minus two. I'm just going to substitute this two over here. So which is two square two m of n minus three plus one plus two plus one. So I'm just uh, multiplying this two square inside the square bracket. So two cube m of n minus three plus two square plus two plus one. so this repeats the same so when you look at this particular step we have 2 square m of n minus 2 plus 2 plus 1 and when you look at this step we have 2 cube m of n minus 3 plus 2 square plus 2 plus 1 so when we are going to substitute uh, the value of m of n minus 3 it just continues as 2 cube plus 2 square plus 2 plus 1 etc so here instead of this uh, uh, numerical values which is in this position i'm just going to substitute it to be i so m of n is equal to 2 per i m of n minus i plus so we have substituted 3 to be i so 2 it can be represented as i minus 1 and the same continues it could be i minus 2 and goes on up till plus So this could be simplified and written as two par i m of n minus i, and these particular terms which I have given in flower brackets could be written as two par i minus one. So now we'll just name this equation to be a, and this is the recurrence equation. And for uh, computing the time complexity of towers of an i, we have to substitute the known value. Which is m of n is equal to one. That is, uh, when n is equal to one, the moves is one. So we have to substitute this m of one equal to one in the a equation. So for this, we have to make the a equation term which should be something equal to m of one. So for doing so, I am just uh, substituting the value of i to be n minus one in a equation. So that is m of n is equal to two par i. So the value of i is n minus one. I'm just assuming the value of i to be n minus one. So m of n minus n minus one plus two par n minus one minus one. 
that is equal to 2 power n minus 1 m of n when you multiply this minus in this brackets you will be getting n minus 1 plus 1 so n and n gets cancelled n plus n and minus n so you will be having only a single one so it is m of 1 so this is minus and plus I am just making the steps clear so that is equal to 2 power n minus 1 m of these both gets cancelled m of 1 plus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 so already we know the value of m of 1 is equal to 1 so 2 power n minus 1 into 1 so 2 power n minus 1 plus 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 so this could be approximately equal to 2 power n minus 1 so the time complexity of your towers of one hour is 2 power n minus 1 or exactly if you have to say when you have to find the total number of moves in towers of one hour the number of possibilities or the number of moves is 2 power n minus 1 where the n denotes the total number of moves thank you